everybody, Dave Thomas here again, and today I'm going to show you how to build an interchangeable clip whip that would be used for clustered rockets. Now for this one I am using an old appliance cord. Uh, if you don't have an old appliance cord, uh, you can find a replacement cord at hardware stores and home stores, things like that, um, or you can get a um, indoor extension cord and just cut the socket end off of that. Mainly what you need is to make sure that you have wire that can handle 10 amps here. Uh, and I'm making this specifically for use with my big red button launch system that's in another video. But many other um, both commercial and homemade launch systems have gone to using standard AC outlets as a means of coupling the wires from the launch system out to the launch pad. And so that's what I'm going to be, going to be doing here. Um, in a pinch, you could use this with a standard system that just has uh, the clips on it. And the way you would do that is just take the clips from your existing launch system, like uh, one of the Estes ones or something like that, and you could simply clip them onto here, like that. Um, and you just need to make sure that they don't have any chance of touching each other and shorting out. Now, something to be aware of, though, is many of the starter kits that have the, the launch system in them are really only meant for single-engine rockets. And so they may not be able to handle the current load required for a cluster rocket. Okay. Other thing you're going to need here are some bullet-style crimp connectors. And so these have a male and a female end to them. And when they're connected, one just fits inside the other. Very snugly here. I'm not going to do that quite yet. Um, it may be difficult to get off. Okay. Um, but this is what's going to allow us to make this interchangeable depending on the type of rocket that you're launching, whether it has two motors or three or four or even more. Now to start with, my cord is six feet long, and I won't, don't want to cut it any shorter than about three feet, but in this case I'm going to use the excess wire to make the actual cluster clip whip. If you have a shorter cord, you may need to find yourself some more um, wire of the appropriate gauge here. Okay. So you're going to need, this is 18 gauge wire on this, and so that should be sufficient because um, that should put us right about at 10 amps. And it's not going to be um, carrying that current for very long. So the first thing I'm going to do here is simply measure off three feet. which is going to be right about there. And cut that off. And I'm just going to set this aside for the moment and take the free wire now. And so if I fold this in half, that's going to give me a foot and a half on each. And then I'm going to peel these. which will give me four wires to start with. Now depending on just how many clips you need in your whip, you may need more. Okay. Um, now if you have a specific rocket in mind that maybe has, say, um, three engines in it, you could make uh, a clip whip that is designed specifically for that rocket. But by making this interchangeable by using these bullet connectors, um, you can change out the whip part and adjust this to be for any type of cluster uh, as long as you don't exceed the current limit. Alright, so those are my little wires. I'll come back to those in a moment. I'm going to come back to the plug end. Okay, so on this end, I'm just going to peel this a little bit. And 
And if you want to keep this from accidentally opening up even more, you can either put a zip tie around this or use a little bit of heat shrink wrap um, right down here to keep that from going. Uh, you can even just use a piece of electrical tape. Now I'm going to get my handy dandy stripper, crimper, and cutting tool here. Um, and these are available from just about anywhere. Department stores, automotive stores, home stores. Okay, and I'm just going to snip off about five millimeters or about a quarter inch of insulation on these. And this is where I'm going to attach the female part of the bullet connector. So I'll put that on there and then crimp that. Okay, and I am purposely using female ends on the supply side here. Uh, because this way they can't accidentally short out. Okay, so now even if this were plugged into my launcher, if these are all by themselves, they're not going to short out. Little kids can't come along and plug them into each other. So that just makes it a little bit safer there. So that's the first part. Alright, so for the second part here, um, I am going to make a 1x3 whip. And this is often done if you have a 3 engine cluster that's really close together. You can twist together one of the leads from each igniter um, toward the center, and then you'll need three leads going around the circumference that make up the other side of the circuit. So with the four wires here, I can just do that. So first I'm going to go ahead and just do one wire. Okay, and I'm going to insert that here. And crimp. Okay, and then I'm going to take one of my igniter clips here and open the other side up. So we'll strip that one. Okay, and this is going to go right here. So you can see that there, there are these two kind of wings that are the crimp connectors for this. So I want my insulation right up next to that. And here you can use a pair of pliers. Um, my tool here has a little plier nose on it. And what I'm going to do first of all is just kind of pre-bend these a little bit. And so they bend toward each other. And I'll put this back in. Now this may be hard to see on the camera as my fingers get in the way. Okay, I bend one over. And then bend the over other over on top of it. Um, well, at the same time, holding the wire in place so we don't lose it. Okay, and that's still a little wobbly there. So now I'm going to press down on both of the little wings there. Okay, and that's got a good secure connection. If you want, you can use a soldering iron and also add just a little bit of solder in there to give it an even better connection. Okay, so that's one of our, my leads. The other lead is going to have three wires in it. And I'm actually giving just a little bit more stripping on these, a little bit longer. If it's too long, we can cut it back in a moment. But if it's not long enough, it's really hard to extend it. OK, 
Okay, so here I'm going to take all of my leads. And then I'm going to join those all in one crimp connector here. Alright, you want to make sure that you can get all of the insulation right up there. Ideally, we'd want a connector that would allow us to get all of them in there um, with the insulation. It's kind of hard to do with these. So at least get it as far up against it as I can. And I'm going to crimp that one. Okay, and it's good and strong. And then I am going to attach the micro clips just like I did with the first one. I'm going to do that off camera though. Okay, I've put all of the clips on. So this lead has three clips. This one just has one. And now to use this, we simply take and attach the bullet connectors. And these might be a bit tight. Just be aware of it. Um, if they're really tight, you can get in and loosen this up a little bit. Take a screwdriver and just spread that a little bit. There we go. Okay, and now this is ready to be hooked up. All right, where the single lead would go to um, three twisted wires, one to each uh, igniter, and then the whip of three goes to the other side of each of those igniters. Okay, and then this end would simply plug into the extension cord that you're using to deliver current from the launch controller out to the clip whip. And as I said, um, if you need to make bigger ones, just get yourself more wire of the appropriate size. And you may have to get bigger bullet connectors too. Okay, so if you've got more than three wires in here, you're going to have to move up to the yellow size of connectors. And with that, I will leave this to you and hope you have a good flight with it.